we are entering an era where if you're on the bottom four tiles of income and investments, you can uh, in 10 years be in a diff very different situation. That means a heck of a lot more millionaires are going to be minted from zero. People that are, that are now scraping by will be millionaires. It's just a question of whether or not it will be you or not. And, and you need to simply jump on the train instead of looking at the train passing by. What is good, Stacks University? I have a very special treat for you today. I get to share an interview I did with one of the smartest people you'll hear on YouTube, Mr. Lior Gantz from wealthresearchgroup.com. While Lior and I sat down for an hour, I'm only gonna share with you some of the highlights from our conversation, where we talk about the favorable outlook on the US economy, building wealth, silver price projections, and nickel as a potential investment vehicle. So let's just get into it. Lior, given everything that's going on in the world, what are your big picture thoughts about where we are? So where are we today with all of this? We are uh, uh, coming uh, to be sober from these fantasies that everybody can be friends and that uh, the, we can erase the past and uh, everyone will be allies, everything will be open, or we'll, we will have one uh, flat earth type world where everybody just uh, talks to everybody else and, and does business with everybody else and there's no interest anymore of nationalities and tribes and countries and religions and, and whatnot. And in that world, the United States still leads, but it leads in a different way. This is that stage where the United States decides its new role in the world. When you look at the economy um, and, and where we are, the United States has given this idea of globalization and hyper-globalization, it has, it's, it has sacrificed it on the altar, it's middle class. And now it's going to bring it back. Uh, the U.S. economy will, will grow faster than it, it has since the 1950s. Um, you're going to have a very good economy, a booming economy. It's hard for most Americans to, to understand that because uh, the thought is that America is on, on this decline. Uh, but uh, if you just strip it bare and you look at all the major advantages today in this world, they're all in America. So you will see U.S. and its allies, um, the, 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 the democratic countries, the, the freedom-loving countries, and you will see the other uh, 35 to 40 percent of the countries. But they're, they're actually more in terms of the world's demographics than the free world. We are moving to a clash between those two uh, civilizations. It doesn't have to be a physical clash or a war um, uh, per se. Um, definitely not, not between America and China directly. But we are moving into that world. Everything points to the mother load being in America. And that's where I think people should um, invest, uh, you know, 100% of their net worth. Lior, for all the doom and gloom we constantly hear, you sound awfully bullish on the U.S. economy. Can you explain that? If I look at corporations, you've had a decade of the 2010s where you had zero interest rates. Um, those corporations wisely took on very cheap debt. Uh, but at the same time, they uh, they they canceled that debt out in the in the COVID era, and now they've been able to use those massive cash tr uh, treasure troves to earn high interest rates for the last few years, and they will continue to do so. So the the American business sector, um, if you look at the Fortune 500 and just uh, the Russell 2000 or the Wilshire 5000, these are companies that are in very good shape. Uh, so the biggest corporations, very good shape. Small, mid-sized businesses, they are in some of the worst shapes uh, that that we've seen because of high inflation. But, um, and this is, a, this is a huge, but they have been the biggest sufferers of this ultra-conservative uh, hawkish interest rate levels of 5.5%. Now that interest rate will start to come down, they will come back harder than ever. And that's because there's about $7 trillion in money market accounts by the consumers. The consumer is very healthy. Um, boomers will, uh, uh, in, in, in the years ahead, will, uh, unfortunately, uh, some of them will perish and, and the money will transfer into millennials. So between all of that and, and the fact that uh, to, in today's world, you, you spend a lot more money, even in, into your 60s and 70s, because uh, 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 health is much better. 
it's it's you don't downsize that much as you did with the classical boomers um, uh, or previous generations. These guys spend, they travel, they vacation. Uh, the economy is doing very well. They, they want to spend more on their health and medicine. Uh, it, it creates a whole new industry. The fact remains the same. It, when you look at America today, it's uh, it, it it's very easy to critique um, because that's it's 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 almost like an American way to critique your own government. But when you look at at the at the private sector and where innovation comes from, not the government, where innovation comes from, um, you have done some marvelous things in the last 20 years you have reinvented your oil industry with fracking you now have the cheapest oil in the world you have abundance of natural gas for 100 100 years into the future um it's it's it, it, the amount of of um uh industries that could come from uh, a low a low cheap uh, oil and natural gas are insane um there's so many derivatives of oil that are now uh, produced in, in America that cannot be produced anywhere else. Almost a monopoly on some uh, uh, plastics and, and otherwise. Secondly, you have uh, grossly underused your uh, system of rivers, uh, predominantly the Mississippi River. I think that will come back. The heartland of the United States, which was sacrificed for other countries' sakes uh, and, and to lift up other countries into hyper-globalization, that uh, will diminish all these uh, cities that are in, in on the banks of uh, the Mississippi will flourish. You can connect the Gulf of Mexico with Miami, with New York, with Chicago, with the lakes. You can create a, 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 an enormous highway of logistics. Um, and, and, and GDP can be three and a half, four percent. It, it, it you know families can earn up to 150 to 200 thousand dollars more in a generation. Uh, the riches that will come to the United States are, are immense. Um, it's not just that the, the arable land. You just look at uh, how you grow foods and never have to worry about any any food security. The rest of the world is going to suffer from food shortages. The United States is not. That's a huge difference. So the only Formidable enemy I can see for you is, is you. you. You yourselves can ruin your own uh, good fortune. My audience will absolutely eat me alive if I don't ask you any questions about metals, in particular silver. What do you see as this role in the portfolio? And do you have any price levels for us to watch? Silver is not even near its uh, um, all time highs or historical ratios with gold and, and everything else. It presents a very interesting opportunity, especially as interest rates are going to be cut. Um, 30, 31 and a half to 32 is, is a very important uh, level for it because that's where the, the critical resistance is. If that is breached, uh, silver is going all the way up to 42. So I think that's that's interesting. Um, I don't think there is any need to speculate. In other words, your your best bet is to do nothing until it reaches 32 and breaks it. And then you have a very high risk, I'm sorry, a, a very low risk, high reward chance of it going from 32 to 42 and instead of trying to bet on whether or not it will happen and go from 27 to 42 that's a 15 uh, dollar move or on 27 cents that's 15 over 27 it should be uh some, somewhere around uh a 55 percent move that's a high risk 55 percent move okay on the flip side i think it, 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 i'm giving you like a, a better way to look at it if it goes to 32, then it will go from 32 to 42 on a very high likelihood. That's a $10 move on 32. That's a 30% move, not a 55, but a 30, but it's a higher um, uh, uh, probability. So what you can do is you can leverage that and you can use uh, uh, leverage ETFs or, or mining stocks or call options. And that 33% or 30% can become 100% with higher probability. Instead of taking a a, a, a non-leveraged, high-risk, 55% move, what is better? So um, it, that's where I am at. I'm, I'm not uh, adding to my silver position, but I think if it reaches 32, you'll see me very aggressively going for uh, the biggest moonshots in, in, in that industry. There are a lot of concerns about a recession. At the same time, you also see a lot of potential for growth in the U.S., 
What words of advice do you have for my viewers around wealth and investing? The United States is always a cake that keeps growing in, in wealth, but the, the vision of that cake that keeps growing is not even. It cannot be divided equally because of skill um, and not because of anything else. It's not the government. It's not anything else. It, there is uh, no other country where the studies show the rags, the riches, the rags, the riches, the rags, the riches can happen to you three times in your lifetime. The, there is no other country like this. Um, so nothing has changed. Uh, America is the land of opportunity. You have to find the opportunity and uh, and you have to just do it. it. It's true that America goes through phases where the mobility between the poor and the rich is harder. Um, but in general, I would say we're entering an era where if you're on the bottom four tiles of income, and investments, you can, uh, in 10 years, be in a diff very different situation. There's no need to sugarcoat anything. You can you can be anything you want in America. Um, uh, it, it, you need to educate yourself. And I would say that in terms of your investments, um, unless uh, unless you're you're uh, um, uh, well off, focus on your income. Focus on your income first. Get the income thing going, especially now when they're going to cut interest rates. The millennials are going to start to get married. They will have children. They will move. You will build five to 10 million new units in America in the next 10 years. In the next 10 years, you're going to build five to 10 million homes. That means a heck of a lot more millionaires are going to be minted from zero. People that are, that are now scraping by will be millionaires. It's just a question of whether or not it will be you or not. So I would say focus on your income first, um, be it from real estate uh, or, or and, and um, construction, housing, etc. Uh, be it from the uh, technologies of the future, um, or be it servicing all of this uh, with low tech if 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 your inclination is not for high tech. So uh, that's number one. Two, if you're an investor. Just invest. Put money to work. Okay? Just put money to work. Um, I, I keep going back to this old adage uh, uh, from Warren Buffett. He said it so wisely that if every middle class American that bought an iPhone would mat would have matched his purchase with a thousand dollars worth of Apple stock, uh, the middle class would be much, much uh, uh, wealthier. So just do that. W wherever you're spending money, think about if that's a public con company. Um, and, and and if you're buying a Tesla, match it, match it. If you if you if you have a five hundred dollar a month payment for your Tesla, buy Tesla stock at the same time. There is so much opportunity. Just start 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 where you are and and and, and get there. Uh, where uh, whether or not there, there'll be a recession, you know, who knows? Well, there's a recession every six to eight years uh, through the life of the republic. Maybe there'll be a recession. I don't know. But it won't. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything. You will still build five to ten million units. Elon Musk will still wake up in the morning and build uh, 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 new departments for 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 Tesla, and, and Google will still do it, and Microsoft will. And, and all these companies, recession or not, they're going to keep innovating, and and you need to simply jump on the train instead of looking at the train passing by. Last time we spoke, you gave me a little heads up about nickel as an area of investment. Are you still bullish on nickel? Yeah, nickel remains very interesting because uh, there's still no active nickel mines uh, in the United States right now. Uh, and nickel is super important for EVs. Um, and moreover, uh, most nickel production happens in China, Indonesia, Russia, and Peru, um, which are four countries that can choose not to sell to the United States. So... Uh, uh, the Department of Energy uh, uh, categorized nickel as the, as the most critical of all energy metals for this uh, decade. So yeah, there's there's a big opportunity with nickel. Uh, Indonesia has, has flooded the market with their nickel, and and they're tapping that sort of a, a strategy. So yeah, the, the the future looks very good for uh, for nickel still. If you take a, a broader look at commodities, I think that uh, nickel is is one of the most interesting ones along with silver. Are there any other thoughts or reports you'd like to highlight before you leave? Three things that might be very interesting for your viewers. Um, one is I did a deep dive on George Soros. Um, he's one of the uh, most hated people in the world. And um, uh, I wanted to know why. And I wanted to understand 
exactly what what's his train of thought. So if you go to uh, wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash Soros, S-O-R-O-S, download that report. I've taken the time to read his books and, uh, uh, and, and I've compiled a very interesting overview and analysis of his uh, point of view. His son, by the way, has met Kamala Harris 45 times during this administration alone. So if you're thinking about how they get their ideas, Obama and, and uh, Biden and Harris, less, less Biden, but more Obama and Harris, go there, watch that, uh, or download that. Two, about Japan. Um, and uh, the yen, the carry trade, the whole thing. Um, WealthResearchGroup.com forward slash Japan is very interesting. It's about exactly that. Um, and also, if you just want to be a reader of uh, the newsletter and basically get uh, three times a week, a four to five minute read, um, an update on what's going on with the economy, with politics, Israel so at, at, uh, at some level, because I'm, I'm, I'm here and I, uh, I have no problem reporting what's going on. Um, and just in general stocks, um, including my own portfolio, then just subscribe on, on our own page, wealthresearchgroup.com. In the comment section, how long do you think it will take for silver to reach $32? Do you agree with Lior that silver will go from 32 to 42? Or do you agree with Dr. Stacker that silver will go from 32 to 50 by early 2025? Or simply put an A plus in the comments so everyone knows that you always stack smarter and never stop learning.